Good morning. I just thought it'd be nice to start our prayer time with a beautiful image um, of a lovely river going through woodland. We'll be talking about trees and water um, a bit later on because this is the first one of these that we've done, the Friday, the prayers that uh, I've done in Advent. I hope you're enjoying the, enjoying the tiny prayers that are being sent to you. Very, very tiny, not prayers, poems, very tiny poems. And they're just there to help you think about what Advent actually is, that waiting time, the time of watching and waiting and how we use it and actually how what is coming is going to change our lives. So just some food for thought there. So let us pray. Shine on us, Lord, like the sun that lights up day. Chase away the dark and all shadow of sin. May we wake eager to hear your word. As day follows night, may we be bathed in your glory. And so our reading is uh, from Revelation chapter 21. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring into it the glory and the honour of the nations, but nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who practises abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there any more, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and there will be no more night. They need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign for ever and ever. What a wonderful vision of eternity. And I'm going to show you I'm going to show you a picture, perhaps, somebody's depiction of the tree of life. For the life of me, I couldn't find out who this was attributed to, but just enjoy it. Well, I'm going to read to you from the Church of England's daily reflection on the reading. This is the reflection by uh, Sarah Rowland Jones. And she says, <clears throat> One weakness of the English language is that because the singular and plural you are the same, we too often individualistically read the promises of scripture and of salvation as if they were for each of us alone rather than for us corporately. Here we are reminded that God's redemptive love in Jesus Christ touches peoples and nations. There will be no more night, no darkness of the shadow of evil and death, not merely for me but for us. Yet grasping the breath of that for us is hard. In her poem, What They Did Yesterday Afternoon, British Somali poet Wasan Shari writes of holding an atlas in her lap, running her fingers across the whole world and whispering, Where does it hurt? It answered, Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. This year we've been seeing illness, suffering and death touch us individually, nationally and globally in ways that we could not have imagined. However deeply we've been affected, we know there's far more pain and sorrow than we can ever comprehend. But our Jesus is the one who does not shy away from any suffering anywhere in creation. He looks it in the eye, shoulders it on the cross, and bears it into the new Jerusalem, so it will find healing salve. This Advent, 
How can we learn to see, to recognise this Jesus and his redeeming love at work in the wider pains we see about us? And the Collect. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him, him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so let us pray. Lord, we offer you all we are, all we have, all we do, and all whom we shall meet this day, that you will be given the glory. We offer you our homes and work, our schools and leisure, and everyone in our community today, may all be done as unto you. We offer you the broken and hungry. We offer you the poor in mind, body and spirit. We ask for your healing. We ask for your presence. We ask for your peace. And with this message for everyone today, corporately, may the wealth and work of the world be available to all, and for the exploitation of none. May your presence be known to all. And as we go about our daily business, we pray, circle us, Lord, keep strife without, keep peace within, keep fear without, keep hope within, keep pride without, keep trust within, keep evil out, keep good within. May we walk in the hope of your kingdom. Fill us with your light and love. Be with us all through this day, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. So that set us up for the day. So as you go about everything else you have to do today, may God be with you and bless those you love. In Jesus' name. And we'll see you soon. God bless. Bye.